given. Let us discuss this result. In this result, the given information is function f is Riemann integrable on closed interval a b. And what we have to prove? We have to prove that f square is also Riemann integrable on closed interval a b. Okay. So I have started with the given information f is Riemann integrable on closed interval a b. Then definitely we can write function f is bounded. Let me mention here implies f is bounded on closed interval a b. So the function is bounded. So that means it is bounded below and it is bounded above. So there, there will be some point okay, uh, such that f of x is always lies below that and there is some point such that f of x always lies above that. So in a simple language, we can express the same thing in this way. So therefore, there exists m, there exists some positive real number m such that what can we write mod f of x less than or equal to m for all x belongs to close interval a b. I'm calling it as one. Okay, this is a very important thing we have got. So let us uh, go back to the given information again. Function f is Riemann integrable. Let me write it again. Okay, so we have we have f is r integrable on closed interval a b. Okay, it is r integrable on closed interval a b. In previous video, we have already proved if function is Riemann integrable mod of that function modulus of that function is also Riemann integrable. So that's why we can write implies mod f is Riemann integrable on closed interval a b. Okay. See uh, what we have to prove. We have to simply prove f square is Riemann integrable. So you know that there are two methods. Either we can prove upper integral is equal to lower integral. Then we say the function is Riemann integrable or we have that epsilon definition. We can also call it as Riemann criteria. See here, I'm going to follow the second method using epsilon definition. We are going to prove that f square is Riemann integrable. So let us take one epsilon. Let epsilon greater than zero be given, right? So I have taken one epsilon. So this information we have, let us use it. What we have mod f is Riemann integrable. So therefore we can write, therefore there exists a partition. This function is Riemann integrable. There exists a partition P, okay, of that closed interval a b, write me, write in this way, x naught to x n b, let me write, such that, such that, such that u p mod f minus l p mod f okay less than epsilon so by Riemann criterion we could write it but see small adjustment i'm going to do that is instead of epsilon i'm going to write epsilon by 2m it's an adjustment here okay so m that means same m i have taken there right okay so let us go further after that we will define few symbols okay so let let small m i which is equal to infimum of mod f of x okay such that xi minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to xi you are familiar with this symbol small m i means infimum capital m i means supremum see for function mod f we have considering okay so mod f of x you can write or you, you can simply write f of x inside mod that is also correct okay so capital m i capital m i means same definition simply we take supremum so i will simply mention in this way after that, we will define m i dash for infimum of f square of x. Getting since we have one more function f square and we have to prove that it is Riemann integrable. So for that function f square, I'm considering m i dash such that x i minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to x i. Similarly, we will define capital m i dash, okay, which is supremum of same function for f square okay and obviously it is true for all i i should write mention here i running from 1 to n see because of this partition the entire interval a b is divided subdivided in sub intervals so for each interval we are defining all these things after that one thing definitely we can write here well, let me mention here clearly we can write f square of x is equal to mod f square of x so I hope all of you are agree with it. Okay. Since see, you know that when we take square, the, it cannot be negative. And when we take mod square, what we do in case of mod square, when you applied mod, we remove minus sign, then we take square. But if you take directly square, then also minus sign will be removed. No, since square is there. So that's why mod f square and f square both will have the same value. 
so yeah we can take a benefit of it and we can write so therefore what can we write see f square and mod f square so therefore using this relation we can write mi dash is equal to mi square and capital mi dash is equal to capital mi square because of this relation we can find a relation between mi dash and small mi and here also capital mi dash and capital mi okay so let us uh, come back to the given uh, what we want you have to prove that f square is riemann integrable that means using epsilon definition we are going to prove that means simply we have to prove upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon this thing we have to prove okay but see there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further so let us continue so i have kept important things here okay yes let us go further so we will consider let me write consider upper sum okay of with partition p and function f square minus lower sum partition p function f square see this is equal to so you are familiar with the definition of upper sum so summation i running from 1 to n capital mi dash delta xi since for f square we have capital mi dash okay dash for function f square so minus lower sum is summation i running from 1 to n small mi dash delta xi so can what can we do common well, we can take a uh, summation common we can take mod xi common let us do so this is equal to summation i running from 1 to n capital mi dash minus small mi dash delta xi but what is value of capital mi dash it is equal to mi square and small mi dash it is equal to mi square so let me write here so summation i running from 1 to n so here capital mi square minus small mi square delta xi so you are familiar with that formula a square minus b square a plus b a minus b so definitely we can write here so this is equal to summation i running from 1 to n capital mi plus small mi and capital mi minus small mi delta xi okay so i'm going to remove it but please keep in your mind so we are going to use equation two letter okay so let me remove that part so you remember statement number one in statement number one we had defined that capital m that means function is bounded okay so that function f is bounded so that's why mod f of x less than or equal to m we have written if function is bounded okay and m is upper bound you can say then its infimum and supremum both of them are less than or equal to capital m so that's why i can write here so this is less than or equal to summation i running from 1 to n okay what can we write capital m plus capital n see actually uh, mod f of x is less than or equal to capital m this is supremum and this is infimum if more that m is upper bounded infimum and supremum both of them are less than or equal to capital m so that's why i could write let me write this capital m and small m as it is delta xi so this is m plus m 2m but see it is independent on summation so you can take outside the summation so this is equal to 2m summation i running from 1 to n capital mi small mi delta xi what will i do uh see i am going to take this two summation separate okay minus sign is there so we can take separate separate summation summation i running from 1 to n capital mi delta xi right and minus summation i running from 1 to n small mi delta xi so this is equal to 2m so you are familiar with this is upper sum okay this is upper sum u p mod f since this is upper sum of mod f mi is supremum of mod f so that's why you should write minus this is lower sum right so l p mod f see but in equation number one already we have stated that this is less than or uh, if i'm right this is less than what we have epsilon by 2m so this is less than epsilon by 2m i think in one or two okay so 2m 2m will get cancelled and what will you have epsilon so therefore u p f square we started with u p f square minus l p f square and we proved it is less than epsilon so that's why by riemann criterion what can we say f square is riemann integrable so implies what can we say f square is riemann integrable on closed interval a b so in this way we proved the function f square is riemann integrable make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you bye bye